So if you're following my channel, then you probably know that I'm quite an X-Files fan. I love Fox Mulder, I love Scully, I love the whole lore of it. I watch it in the 90s, even now, every now and then I watch an episode. Uh, you know, it's very nostalgic for me. I do love the show. And one reoccurring piece of imagery, or like a visual, that, that was going almost through all seasons of the X-Files, was the I Want to Believe poster. Now it was hanging in my room when I was younger. I had friends, it was hanging in their room. It's, it's a very iconic and powerful poster. And I always wondered, what is the story behind it, right? Like, did the X-Files invent it, or did it exist prior to that? Where is the image from, and so on? So I found this detailed Twitter thread breaking down the history of this poster, and it is really, really interesting. It was put together by Nicole, at Gay Cruton on Twitter. Please give her a follow, because she's doing a great job of breaking this down. She's a self-described nerd fangirl who loves the X-Files, so she's really diving deep into the origins of this poster, and I want to share this with you guys in this video because it is, at least to me, and if you're an X-Files fan, probably to you as well, uh, deeply fascinating. So let's fly through this. So Nicole says, Did you know there are several versions of the famous I Want to Believe poster from the X-Files? Here's a thread breaking down the history of the poster and some of the behind-the-scenes and in-show explanations for all these changes. And I wasn't aware of this, right? There are four different versions, at least four different versions, of the I Want to Believe poster within the X-Files universe, right? And you can see it's changing slightly. Some of them, the last one doesn't have the white frame around it. The font is changing slightly. The imagery is changing slightly. So let's dive into it and see where it comes from. This is the first poster we see in the series, arguably one of the most utilized in fan-made creations and most recognizable to this date. So this is the original poster. It's the poster that we see in, in season one. And I agree with her, I would say this is probably the most iconic version of the four poster we've seen. The poster's concept art came from the series creator, Chris Carter, stating, let's get a picture of a spaceship and put Ed Russia like I want to believe. I love Ed Russia. I love the way he puts text into his paintings. I actually got to say to him, I was inspired uh, by you. So Ed Russia is an American pop art a painter, right? He is still alive and he does a lot of stuff uh, like this. You can see it. He's very, very big, iconic, American, often American imagery, but also like big typographic treatment over images. So this is the kind of stuff that Ed Rusher does. And Chris Carter, who, who gave the statement we just read out, is kind of the inventor or the creator of, of X-Files as a whole, right? He was a producer on the show. I think he also directed episodes. He wrote episodes. So, so he's kind of one of the big brains behind X-Files. And he apparently is one of the big brains behind this I Want to Believe poster. So here's an example of Ed Rusher's work, this piece in particular. That was then, this is now number one from 1989, was clearly influential to the creation of the iconic The Truth Is Out There past of the opening sequence, right? Very reminiscent of the X-Files opening, right? When it says The Truth Is Out There with the clouds behind it. It literally looks like this artwork brought to life. So interesting there, right? That the creator Chris Carter was a fan of Ed Rusher's work and, and that's how that post and that imagery almost was brought to life. Really fascinating. In the show, Mulder tells Scully that he bought the poster from a head shop, which is a nickname for stores that specialize in marijuana products and drug paraphernalia, on M Street. The poster is seen during the pilot episode, so season one, episode one, so it can be presumed that Mulder bought it sometime prior to the March or to March of 93. And she kindly puts these images there as well, like screen grabs from the actual show. So this, look at young Dana Scully. There she is, right? Gillian Anderson, incredible. But the poster behind her. So that was kind of the first time, even in the pilot episode, it already existed and was part of that iconic visual language of the show. In the beginning of season one, the set for Mulder's office wasn't firmly established. A lot of elements are familiar, but the iconic set, as we come to know it, isn't quite there yet. For the initial episodes, the I Want to Believe poster can be found near the door of the office. So a few shots here, right? This is where Scully comes in. You see it there on the right-hand side. Uh, and, and you'll see in later posts that it kind of changes position again. It hangs next to the entrance there. But they, they shifted the set around a bit, right? A lot of the imagery in Mulder's office changes throughout the episodes. As season one goes on, Mulder and Scully seem to have fun doing occasional interior decorating in between cases as items are constantly moving. In Eve, which is episode 11 of season one, we can see the poster behind Mulder's desk, but it's not 
quite in the normal position. And with normal position, she's referring to the next tweet. So in Fire, episode 12, so the episode right after this one, we can see the poster arrangement in the office appears to be getting serious as an abundance of large posters start popping up. We can see that it's not the full I want to believe poster behind Scully, rather the small original photos as if they were trying out that placement, right? So they were constantly evolving that set piece, changing it around. Obviously, the show was very successful, so a lot of thought went into optimizing the set. What imagery do you use? What do you show behind the actors to kind of really bring to life that, that spirit and this kind of paranormal approach of the show? So you can kind of see it, I think, in the next image behind her here. And it's much smaller, right? It is not the full I Want to Believe poster. It really is just like a small photograph, like the original photograph. I'm starting to believe that one of them was very pro-astronaut poster, right? Because you can see here, there's this huge astronaut poster of Lance Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin walking on the moon, right? So that kind of takes over this, almost replaced at this point, the I Want to Believe poster. Because in Gender Bender, which is the 14th episode of season one, the UFO image has been moved to the other side of the cork board while the big poster is hidden behind other images and placed high on the wall where it remains for season one. So there it is. See, it, it is the image, right? It's not the poster at this point. And I think we can see a little bit of it here, right? So it's been covered up by other posters. It's kind of disappeared, whatever reason that may have. And then again, you can see it up here again, it's been obstructed other things sitting in front of it. And apparently that's how it remains for the whole of season one. In the finale of season one, the poster is still hiding high on the wall. Interestingly, when Mulder goes back to the closed down office in three, which is the seventh episode of season two, the poster is finally in its usual position behind Mulder's desk. Did the cleaners move it? Did Mulder move it? Is that like the righteous hand of symbolism? So you can kind of, it's here, right? Where we're used to seeing it in the later seasons. By Firewalker, which is episode nine of season two, the X-Files department is back. Skull is returned. The poster is in its rightful place what could go wrong. So very clearly in the position where it's supposed to be not obstructed anymore, very clearly visible. Then, when the art department originally presented the poster to Carter, he recognized the photograph of the flying saucer they had used as the cropped version of the famous Billy Edward Albert Meyer photo number 494. So it is a crop of this Billy Meyer. I mean, if you're not familiar with who Billy Meyer is, it's worth Googling him. He is this guy who lives, I don't know, somewhere in Austria on the Alps or whatever. And he has taken hundreds and hundreds of images claiming to have been visited uh, by extraterrestrials, having contact with them. And like, it's, it's quite an extraordinary story. But you can see that this over here clearly is a crop, right? It's a crop close-up of this particular Billy Meyer photo. So that is where the imagery actually comes from. When Carter asked if they had gotten clearance to use the photograph, they replied that they had. Unfortunately, this was not the case. As a few years later, Fox Legal called Chris, stating that they had an intellectual property lawsuit due to the use of Billy Meyer's photo. So the art department of the X-Files, the guys who put all this together, who finds the imagery, they're like, yeah, yeah, we got clearance for the image. It's all good. Lying, like straight out lying, which is insane if you think about it. Like an art department, this is like a key part of their job that they make sure they have the rights to use the images that they're using. They probably thought, well, we'll get away with it anyway. Well, they didn't, right? Like Fox was sued by Billy Meyer for using actually just a crop of that image on their photo. So that that's a really fascinating part um, of that story. And then as a result... They had to change the poster, and this version is only seen during season one to three. Right? Obviously, they had to change it. And not only in Mulder's office, in Jose Chunks from Outer Space, which is episode 20 of season three, Blaine Faulkner is shown with the I Want to Believe poster in his room. Okay, so you see his room, and the poster is there as well. So it really is like a staple of the X-Files universe. The final appearance of this poster is in Talitha Kumi, uh, which is episode 24 of season three. You kind of see it there a little bit in the background, but then they had to change it. Now this is the second I Want to Believe poster uh, in the series. Due to the rights issues, the art department had to completely change the poster's look while keeping it recognizable. They created a new UFO and changed the landscape of the trees among other things. 
So the font is slightly different. The trees are quite significantly different. Actually, the, the poster is slightly sharper, right? Because it was such a heavy crop onto that Billy Meyer image. Um, now they, they opted in for something that is slightly less cropped, slightly sharper. Still a bit blurry, so it's re-recognizable. Really also, the UFO looks different it suddenly has like these i don't know if these are illuminated spots or reflections underneath it so so it is still recognizable if you wouldn't know you probably wouldn't even notice that it's a different poster but it is a completely different image due to the rights issues they had the first time from the perception that we see this poster in tunguska which is episode eight of season four the characters make no reference to the posters change within the x-files universe the poster is the same Okay, so it's never addressed in the show that it's a different image. It's just the same poster. This poster gets to hang around in the background for all of season four and five. Okay, so you can see now it is that poster. And to be honest with you, I never noticed it, that it's a different poster. They never address it. And, and you know, it seems to be like a quite subtle change. I mean, if you look at them next to each other, it's not a subtle change at all. But... If you have no point of reference, it is a very subtle change. It's common for people to look at the poster introspectively, but this poster features in the first textual address as Scully asks Mulder about it in Chinga, which is episode 10 of season 5. Mulder says he got it around 5 years ago. Since this episode takes place in 98, it's confirmed that it was bought in 93. Okay, there's a little bit of X-Files lore there. I'm not going to play this bit to you, uh, to you guys. By the way, I'll link this whole thread down in the comments. So a little clip like that, you can check it out yourself. It is basically just Scully coming into the door. And she's like, yeah, hmm, where did you get this post? And he's like, I bought it a few years ago. Uh, so it, it's a pretty straightforward. But this is kind of the first time... It seems like where they really address the poster. Like literally she's like, what is this poster about? And then he says where he got it from. Unfortunately, this poster meets a tragic end in The End, episode 20 of season 5, as it gets destroyed when the office is set on fire. So again, as it's burning down, you see it on the left-hand side. The you are here post-it note is still on it that we saw earlier. And even an imagery of the burnt down office, it kind of remains semi-visible while everything else is destroyed because again it is such an iconic thing it is probably the most iconic visual in fox Mulder's office the thing that everyone remembers and again here uh, it, it is seen in the background as one of the very few things that stay recognizable in fox Mulder's burnt down office this marks the first time where the poster needs to be replaced within the world of the show it takes 16 episodes for this to happen it's incredible what Nicole, the research that she did, she dove so deep, I appreciate this so much, um, into the placement and the appearances uh, of this poster. I would like to note that despite the fact we know they have a dozen posters, they just leave a dramatic empty spot on the wall. Okay, so here on the left-hand side, while everything else in, in Mola's office is very cluttered, you actually see like an empty spot on the left-hand side. In Alpha, episode 16 of season 6, Scully notices that Mulder's online friend Karen Burquist has an I Want to Believe poster hanging in her office. Later, Karen, knowing her fate, sends Mulder the poster and he puts it up over the aforementioned dramatic empty poster-sized space peace is now restored she notices it in, in this this other woman's office and then later she sends it to Mulder, and then he puts it up in the exact spot that was just that was left empty in previous episodes there was nothing there which looks very much as if that was done intentionally right like they intentionally because surely if you're a set designer for this and and Mulder's office is famous for being so cluttered with a lot of stuff why would you leave an open spot like that surely you would cover it up with all kinds of paraphernalia and imagery Unless you go to the director and the producers and say, no, this space has to remain empty because that's where the poster will later go. It's like a placeholder. Like she says, it's like almost this, the piece has been restored once the poster is back in its place. Did you notice anything different? It's slight, but the season six introduces the third iteration of the I Want to Believe poster. The saucer is tilted the opposite direction and there are minuscule changes to the coloring and borders. It's believed these are just symbolic changes for the move to Los Angeles. The third version of the poster stays through the rest of the original series' run from season 6 to season 9. So again, you see it in the background in various episodes. The last time we see the poster in the original series is on the floor of the emptied out office. Duggett, as always, is the real MVP and rolls it up for safekeeping. Now that's a true friend. Interestingly, the initial shot of it on the floor is of V2, so the second version of the poster, but he rolls up 
V3, so the third version. So again, like even in little shots, like where they go from showing the poster on the floor in the emptied out office and him rolling it up, there are differences within which of those four motives it is. Six years have passed, but have no fear. The I Want to Believe poster is still intact and ready to appear in the aptly titled movie, I Want to Believe. The movie features its own style of poster, but only slightly. This is pretty much my version 2 used in season 4 and 5, but without the white border. Right, so this poster has like a white border all around it, while this one doesn't. Who knows why they changed it or why they removed the white border, but that's what it is. So isn't that incredibly fascinating through how many iterations this poster went throughout the X-Files, that the X-Files and the producer and writer of the show, the inventor, was actually the creator of the poster or the guy who had the idea to put that poster there, how iconic it became. I mean, it is definitely linked to the X-Files. It's clearly part of that lore. And if you see the poster, I think that's what most people associate with it. But beyond the X-Files, I think at this point, it really has taken a life on its own. At this point, it is really a part of pop culture that is reminiscent of the X-Files, but absolutely lives outside the X-Files universe as well. It is such an iconic piece of UFO imagery and I read through this thread and I was just like, wow, this is so fascinating, like how it links to the X-Files and, and how iconic and important it was and how it even had like symbolism within the show where we left an empty space and put it there. So just a really fascinating story that I wanted to share with you guys. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What do you think? I mean, do you have this poster in your room? Are you a big fan? Do you maybe have personal memories connected to this poster? Leave any of your thoughts, experiences, stories down in the comment section below. I'd be very curious to hear them. Also, please don't forget... To subscribe to the channel, smash the like button if you enjoyed the, the video and you can also join our Discord, okay? We have a Discord, it's free to join. The link to that is down in the description. I'm hanging out there, many other people hanging out there. It's a great community. So if you want to discuss this further, you want to talk to me about it or just get in touch for any other reason, please join the Discord. I'd be delighted to see you over there and uh, hear from you. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate your time. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and I'm out. Bye.